away from the city lights, home to the Nepal's highest human settlement. Dolpa district is the part of Karnali province. Dolpa is the largest district of Nepal, covering 5.36% of the land mass of the country. A large portion of district is protected by Sheh Puksondo National Park. The name is derived from the 12th century Sheh Monastery and the deepest lake in the Nepal, the Puksondo Lake, both of which lies in the district. The beautiful Dolpur region is situated in the Shefuksundo National Park of Midwestern Nepal, right behind the gigantic Dolagiri Massif. Cut by a series of dangerous high passes and shut down by the snow most of the year, the region sees extremely lesser number of tourists. The reason behind that is that the region is very hard to access in the first place. This remote western part of Nepal has been blessed with splendidly amazing landscapes. People of Dolpo live in the extreme remote village of western highland of Nepal. Their lifestyle is not at all influenced by the modernity, is close to the primitive ones. The climate in upper Dolpo is very arid with a sparse vegetation. The name Dolpo comes from the Tibetan Dol, which means abundance. This refers to the natural and the mineral resources and the manifestation of the religious traditions. The Dolpopa, as the inhabitants in the upper Dolpos are called, are predominantly active in agriculture. Local agriculture is vital to having enough food over the long winter, although it is not said to last every winter. People in Dolpo grow potatoes, corn, wheat, millet, Tibetan barley, and local crops. Although the major occupation of people of Dolpo is farming, majority of families in Dolpo are unable to grow the food sufficient for the whole year because of the insufficient land they own. Hence the Dolpopas are the people of Dolpo are bound to depend on the other activity for their living, such as animal husbandry. It is the most important traditional economic activity, which signifies the financial status of the family based on the number of animals they own and trade to make the subsistence livelihood. People still rely on the yaks and the horses for the transportation since there is no road connection yet to the rest of the country or across the border. In last few decades, however, the income generated from the Yarsagumba, a high-value caterpillar fungus, has brought the major social, political and economic changes in the region. Most Dolpapas are Buddhists, although the born religion of Tibet, which predates Buddhism, is still practiced in some villages. Bon and Buddhism are the two dominant religions, which constitute over three dozen monasteries in Dolpo. Local relies on MG, tradition as the healthcare practice, which uses the herbs and other medicinal plant is to treat the illnesses. This high and arid region in Himalayan rain shadow has been isolated from the rest of Nepal, not just due to the remoteness, but because of the lack of investment in health and education. It is said that the children are taught not only the national curriculum of Nepal, but also their Tibetan language, history, and culture. The classes runs from April 1 to April 31. The schools are said to be unheated and it is too cold to fully upgrade them in the winter. Although there is no formal school in the winter months, most of the school now have the greenhouse that doubles as a classroom in winter. Typically, a villager or the local lama will teach the students about their history, culture and religion. 
The culture and language of the region is Tibetan, and the school work to help to ensure the continuation of the Tibetan way of life. These villages are only a day or two walk from the Tibetan border, and as the Chinese increases their influence on the Tibet, the Upper Dobo is becoming the last refugee of the Tibetan culture. A small kid from Upper Dobo. With the brightest smile, he was fascinated by the small corners of color his father created, and spent hours admiring his father's detailed work. In the mandalas that his father made, the only focus ever was on the deity, but for him it was the corner of the mandala that held the allure. The corner where the small scenes of daily life. And subtle hint of the story were painted, and he knew that it was the corner that he wanted to draw and base his art on. On the most of the day, the street of Doba is said to be under thick coat of snow. To the inhabitant there, lives are lived in monocolor. Tenzin Norbu was born in 1971. His family has been painting for five generation, probably even more. His earliest memory of painting was at the age of eight, and it was all because of his father. His father was also the MG of village. He was born in Buddhist family, family of Ngakpa. Ngakpa are both healers and practitioner of the highest level of tantric Buddhism in the Himalayan region. Although he grew up with the heavy religious learning, his work always centered on life and in all its ordinariness. So he drew landscapes, scenes from the daily life of local residents, and filled them with colors. But his illustrious career as an artist began with a visit from a French photographer, who had walked to the rural hills in Dopa for nearly a month. He was Eric Valley, the celebrated photographer who worked for National Geographic magazine, then and would later become a household name in Nepal. We could barely communicate, but through an interpreter, he expressed his appreciation for my work. And asked me if I would be willing to come to Kathmandu with him, recalls Stenzin. He remembers being dubious about the stranger's offer, because to that day he had never seen anyone with fair hair, far less a foreigner. He declined the offer, but Valley promised that he would be back in three months, and asked Stenzin to reconsider his offer. Before leaving, he commissioned Tenzin to paint a couple of landscape, capturing the daily lives of people of Dolpo. He paid me five hundred rupees, and at that age, there was nothing that could have made me happier," says Tenzin. Valley returned three months later, and he came bearing color pencil, illustrated French book, and some sketchbooks. That was the first time Tenzin saw color pencil. Until then, he had relied on the charred ends of wood splinters, and naturally extracted colors to make his paintings. Tenzin admired Valley's tenacity and his loyalty to his promise. He promptly agreed to come to Kathmandu. I didn't agree because of the opportunity that coming to Kathmandu will bring my way. I was really impressed by Valley. He seemed like a genuine nice man, with all the right motivation. He says. He moved to Kathmandu in the early 1990s and experienced a big cultural change. He was exposed to a life outside the mountain that was dominated by cars and aeroplanes. With barely a word of Nepali in his vocabulary, Tenzin walked from Dolpa. To Kathmandu with Valley, the trip took them 41 days. All along the way, Valley took photos and Tenzin drew them. During the time in Kathmandu, 
Nepali compiled and published the book Caravan Himalaya. He already authored the critically acclaimed Honey Hunters of Nepal previously. The book inspired the movie Himalaya, which got an Oscar nomination for Best Foreign Language Film. Tenzin was one of the contributors to the filmmaking. He drew tanka pieces and landscape for the movie and helped draft the story, which was based on the local events and also connected to his own life in Dolpa. The movie became a massive hit and Tenzin flew to the France for the movie's premiere, then followed by a string of exhibition for Tenzin at some of the top exhibition hall in Nepal, Japan, Denmark and also in Dartmouth University and Cornell University. In the capital city of Nepal, Kathmandu, we are going to meet the artist himself, preparing for his first solo exhibition in 20 years. Namaste and Trish Dele, and my name is Tenzin Marbu. I am going to be able to get the first time in 2016. I am going to be able to get the first time in 2016. अनि तें देखिए अमी देखो अहुन साब बने रास्ते यो ऐतिहासिक शुरू बायो यो मोड पुने बायो अब मॉले तो पुने लाखा नेपाल मा अब अब आली के दिन मंचे और पुने पहले को बंदा अब बीस बार सब मत तेरे फरक बाय सा बीस बार सा आगर इता एक्सपीशन को पूरा तेरे मंजिल था थे ना थोड़े मंजिल संगे इंटरेस्ट होन मां अर्थिक को मां समझ जाते हैं ना आर्थ संगे अर्थिक अर्थिक पुण्य साथ देरे कुरा हो गांसे साय अब ते पुण्य सोचे साथ तारा ये उटा सुबह नहीं पुण्य हो माले लक्षा ऐसे उन सा वंगारों आमी नेपाल मां आमी नेपाल मां पै पैसा कमाऊं ना इजाब में ना करूं आमी मंजिल खुशी पार ना था हो शान मंजिल रूले आठ � Windhorst Gallery is located at the second floor of the Mokshpar Lalitpur. The art gallery itself was started in 2020 of March and has been doing great job in promoting and empowering the community through art. The owners are humble and kind. The gallery really enriches people's life and opens the door in your imagination. So can you tell me more about the um, tomorrow's exhibition? Yeah. And uh, tomorrow we are going to have, we are so excited to uh, open our new art space with uh, Yuseva, uh, Tenzin Nobula. Uh, Tenzin Nobula is a magical artist and we are so honored and happy to have him launch our new space with this solar exhibition called uh, Journey of a Nomadic Traveler. And uh, I think uh, you are it's very exciting. Uginla is, Uginla is create. Yeah, and Uginla, Uginla, uh, Nobula is, uh, we are so uh, fortunate to have Uginla Nobula as the, the curator. And right now they are busy in the space. Uh, you know, creating a wonderful, wonderful show, and we are so excited to for tomorrow. Yes. So we are at the Windhorst Gallery right now. So things are working. Tomorrow's exhibition. So today is like a preparation day. So I'm going to show you what is happening inside. Preparation for tomorrow's exhibition was fantastic, especially with the help of curator and artist working together. Please come visit our exhibition tomorrow at Windhorse Gallery for the ex exquisite art of Tenzing Nora and experience Dolpa in Kathmandu at Windhorse Gallery. Journey of a Nomadic Explorer an exhibition on display at the Windhorst Gallery is the life story of Tenzin Norbu, 
narrated through his acrylic painted canvases curated by Urgen Norbogurum. The exhibition has been divided into three sections. Norbo's life admits the Himalayas, his perception of life and his vision for the future. The first leg of the exhibition, displayed on the left-hand side white wall of the gallery, is the voyage into the Norbu's life in Dolpo. The two notable pieces are situated at the end of the wall, which is also recommended starting point for the visitor. The first painting, titled Sushi Caravan, is inspired by his travels to Japan. During his visit, he ate at a restaurant where the sushi was moving around on a small train and patrons had to pick the food from it. He immediately made a sketch and mixed it with the aspects from his life in Dolpo. Looking closely, you can see that sushi starts from a building and is soon led to the back of the animals that form caravan leading it to the mountains. The second part is exhibited on the blue right-hand side wall of gallery. Consisting of six pieces, it has four smaller artwork and two big artworks. One of the biggest pieces in Norbu's version of New York's skyline, titled Himalayan New York, inspired by his travel in the U.S. city. Norbu has added his Dolpo heritage at the various places in the artwork that require the closer inspection. The last leg of exhibition, located on the right-hand side wall of the gallery, is the Norbu's contribution and vision of his life and future. He found the three paintings in his village in Dolpo. After photographing them, he added his touch to it, like one side has the water flowing, while the other shows a monk holding an earth and more. The exhibition was quite successful as the gallery was filled with the people of different age group. It's fantastic to come out and see all this creativity that people are willing to share. They also sell tote bag and prints. Great way to help and support this place. Tenzing has traveled all over the world, seeing people from all the culture and background. Yet he prefers simple thing, a day in the studio, a cup of nice coffee and good conversation. Although he has been exposed to various forms of art, he is still the young painter at heart, drawing the corner of Tanka painting. And a little kid with a bright smile is now a well-known in Nepal for his fusion of traditional art and contemporary illustration set in his pastoral, innovative rendering of the landscape many of which feature scenes of traditional life in the high Himalaya. Not only that, Nurbu has illustrated four children's book and founded Kulari Mountain School in his native Panzang Valley, creating educational opportunity for the children in this remote region. And this is the story, the journey of nomadic explorer. I hope you guys like the video. And the video like this takes a lot of time and effort. Thank you so much for watching till now and I'll be coming with the next video. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye.